Hi, welcome to another Last Humans Tech video. What I wanted to do today is talk to you about common interview questions for Unix related jobs and Linux related jobs. And I've been through quite a few of these in the last few weeks. And all of these are actual questions that I received from all different types of companies, from top level social media companies to smaller companies you probably haven't heard of. They're all very similar. And I won't go into super detail on every one but we're just going to have a quick overview here. So you definitely want to know what all the file systems in a Unix system are and what each of these directories contain also is very important for you to know. You want to know the startup sequence of your Unix or Linux system and this would mean after you push the power button what happens? That's a common question I've had and you have to be able to tell these people what exactly happens with each step of a startup process and here you can kind of see that you can do more research on that if you want more details the LSOF command that's one I did not know quite a while ago and I've recently made sure that I know that one it just wasn't a command I would used too often and it's going to list all your open files and processes it's a common command make sure that you know this one you're going to have to know your three DNS records. That's a uh, pretty common interview question. And your C name is going to be your alias. And your A record is an address mapping an IP to a name. And your NS record, of course, is your name server record. And little quote from Wikipedia, it's going to delegate a subdomain to a set of name servers. You should know the seven layers of the network model. Now this isn't specifically an area that I have kind of focused on in, in my career direction, but any Unix interview is probably going to ask you this question, or at least ask about one of these levels. So you do want to make sure you are familiar with all seven levels and can describe a little bit with these little hints here what a particular level would do. If you hear the term CMDB, this is a basically a configuration database and most companies have something some type of CMDB it's used to track your hardware and your service life and basically just an asset tracking tool so make sure you are familiar with the term CMDB the hard link soft link question that's age old common in, in, in interviews everybody asks that and it isn't too, comp too complicated a question really your hard link is just your file exists in two different locations. Your soft link is just like a shortcut, like on your desktop, pointing somewhere. So, of course, if you remove the original hard link file, your soft link would then be dead because your file is only in one place when you have a soft link. I missed this question once. What is process ID number one? I just hadn't really thought about it before, and I couldn't answer it on that particular phone interview. So, of course, I had to study it within the next few minutes after I was finished with that call. And it was so simple that I just didn't get it at that time. But, of course, it's the first process on the box, so it would launch your init sequence, which would then bring up your box through each of the init stages. So, process ID 1 is used to start up the system. Inodes, very, very common interview question. Make sure you know what inodes are. They're pointers to files, and they hold various file information, such as your disk block locations, permissions, and attributes of that particular file. The Linux run levels, you definitely should know these too. Someone might ask you, how do you reboot the Linux? How do you halt it? And you want to make sure that you are familiar with all these different run levels. How to install packages on your different types of Unix and Linux machines. That was probably going to be an interview question about the particular flavor that you may be interviewing for. So make sure that you are familiar with how to add packages and or patches on your Unix system. How do you see the exit status of your command? This is the dollar sign question mark. That is the answer and you just type that at any prompt to see the results of the last command that was run and it'll either say 0, 1, or 2 and down here you see what that would mean. 
how to create a new file system. Let's say you um, create a new partition on a disk on Linux or Solaris. Um, you would have to make a file system on it before that disk would be usable. And for Linux, you'd use the makefs command. And for Solaris, you'd do a newfs command. And then you'd have your dev disk path on those type of commands. Common RAID levels. This is also a super common interview question. You should really know them all, but at least the most common ones, of course, you got to tell the difference between a stripe and a mirror and why they are important. Of course, your stripe is for performance and your mirror is for safety and backup. And there are mixed RAID levels, which contain a combination of both. And one of the other common RAID levels used is a RAID 5 which is a stripe, but it does have parity over multi multiple disks. And RAID 5 does have a three disk minimum. What is Pixie? Pixie boot means booting from the network. You've probably seen this before if you've worked on Linux or x86 machines. And if a disk is not seen in the machine, for example, a physical disk, then you'll see it go up to PXE boot. And that's because it's trying to find some place to boot. It's looking out over the network. So it would be good to study the Pixie process and how it works, where it looks for DHCP requests and it can get a boot image through the TFTP protocol. So research your Pixie boot process. That is very common with the interview questions. You do want to know for Red Hat specifically where your network file configurations are to be able to get a box on the network. So make sure you are familiar with these. This is pretty common. Most of the regular system admins are going to know this question. But you want to make sure you know how to configure the box to get it up on the network. And to finish, I'd like to give you some closing thoughts on how I handle the particular interview and some other important tips. All right, guys. I'd like to give you some final tips on your Unix Linux interview. Um, the most important thing is that you you do a lot of research on the company. I know everybody says that, but this is more than, say, spend an hour on the site before the interview. You have to do more than that. You have to um, spend two to three good days research, researching their company. Um, what you want to do is go to their website, look at their uh, press releases, their newsroom, and their history, their foundation, um, the company culture. You, you want to know, for example, how many employees they have and any big milestones they made. You want to show that you really looked into their company a lot and that you are excited about seeing it. Another, um, some questions at the end of the interview, they're going to say, do you have any follow-up questions? A very good question for you to ask them is, do you have any concerns about my skill sets for this position? What this will allow you to do in a roundabout way, they can let you know there might be a particular area here which we're a little concerned about. And this gives you the immediate opportunity to talk to them about that and to convince them how this concern would not be a problem for you to be able to function in the job and that you do have enough skills to be able to perform the job to their expectations. Another good question, sort of similar, is what do you think will be my greatest challenge in this job? This is another way to get out of them what they feel could be difficult for you. And in turn, it's a way for you to then set their minds at ease and discuss with them how you would welcome this challenge, but you were sure that you could overcome this challenge and you could persevere. and. These are two opportunities on your follow-up questions to give you a little more positivity in leaving the interview and leave a little better taste in their mouth. If they ever ask you, do you have experience in this particular app, this particular software? You know, nobody has experience in every app that every company uses. So you never want to say no and end it there. You say no but and you need to talk about similar applications and similar software that you do have experience in which the knowledge would be easily transferable into theirs and it shows that you have a foundation in that general area 
and you can easily pick up a new application and learn it because of your past experiences. And one of the hardest interview questions I get, um, what is the biggest mistake you've ever made? Sometimes they'll say biggest mistake at work that you've ever made. I can't answer this one for you guys. This is really hard. You don't want to talk about a mistake that cost your company, say, a million bucks. Um, what you want to talk about is a smaller, a small to medium-sized mistake and in which you were able to quickly um, correct and repair that mistake. And in addition, you made sure that that mistake did not happen again. You might have changed or improved a process. So you don't want to give out your biggest mistake ever in the history of your life. Um, that's not the point of this. Um, you don't want to present weakness in the interview. So a lot of places will ask, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, I like to say, I like to be continually moving up in your company. I would like to be taking on more responsibilities as the years go on and grow into a long-term career. That's what I like to talk about here. Some interviewees will ask, talk to me about process improvement. What did you improve at the last place you worked? This is a pretty important one. You really should spend some time thinking about this. And you want to talk about um, what kind of process or SLA did you improve while you were at work? One example that I think of is a normal rack installation server timeline at my particular job might take, for example, a month. And I, dis I changed the process to have our racks prepared in advance for a quicker server install. And what this did was cut 20% off of that server install timeline. So you want to think like that. Think of something you used to do at work. It took a certain amount of time and you came up with whether it be a physical process, a software process, a script, anything that shortened that and made the task much easier. And then you're going to talk about how you can apply it to that job. That would be a really good way to talk about process improvement. In the end, they might say, why should we hire you? And I like to talk about my three strongest attributes dedication, honesty, and focus. Uh, and you want to be able to describe a few reasons for the three also. For dedication, it's because I spend a long time at each particular job. Um, six to seven years I spent at a couple jobs. And my honesty, I own up to my mistakes. If I make a mistake in the data center or on Unix, I will go to my leads and managers and tell them. I've never been fired for a mistake, and honesty is always the best policy. And focus is my third attribute. Um, I can get real focused and dedicated to resolving a particular problem. I can spend days and days just researching and studying until I come up with a solution. So those are three attributes that I like to share when they ask about that. That is basically it. Um, your biggest accomplishment at work. That is a bit harder one for me also. Um, I built out a data center for a long period of time, so it's kind of like a long-term accomplishment in my eyes. It's really hard to come up with short-term um, accomplishments, but each person will have a different experience. So definitely try and come up with some big things you achieved, some big processes you achieved, and things like that. That's all the interview tips I got for you right now. Thanks for watching Last Humans Tech, and I'll see you next time.